When Arjun was confused in the battle of Mahabharata and approached Lord Krishna for knowledge and guidance, the first bit of knowledge that Sri Krishna bestowed was knowledge of the Self. Arjun, think who you truly are. There was never a time when you did not exist. There will never be a time when you will cease to be. And think who are these people who are gathered here to fight as well. There has been a saint in the last century in India, very well known, called Raman Maharshi. He would also repeatedly get his disciples and followers to introspect regarding the question who they are. He would say, you know who your mother is, who your father is, who your husband or wife is, but do you know who you are? If you do not, then your knowledge is stemming from the core of ignorance. If a person would come to Raman Maharshi with a problem, Gurudev, I have this family problem, this financial problem, this health problem. He would say, think, who has this problem? Once somebody came to him in distress and said, Gurudev, I have this family problem, financial problem and this health problem and don't tell me to think who has this problem. <laughs> he said, think in that case, who is saying, don't ask me to think who has this problem. Go back to the core. What is the score? The wise old man of Greece, Socrates said, 2500 years ago, he would also encourage his students to ponder over the question, who are they? That is why in the temple of Apollo in Delphi, is inscribed this word, these words, Nothi Suton in Greek, know thyself. So Swami Vivekananda said, Thou art souls immortal, spirits blessed, free and eternal. Thou art not bodies and thou art not matter. Matter is your servant and not you, the servant of matter. To think that we are a bag of chemicals is a tremendous insult to our eternal soul. This body is yours. The fact that it is yours means that you are different from the body. There is I and there is something which is mine. What is mine is relational to I. It cannot be I. The I is apart from all of these. That I is referred to in the scriptures as the Atman, the soul, the spirit different ways in different religious traditions of the world. That is the real you. And that you, the soul, is a tiny part of the Supreme Soul. Mama Ivan Jeeva Loke Jeeva Bhuta Sanatanaha This is said in the Bhagavad Gita 15.7 Chinmatram Shri Hare Rancham Sukshma Maksharam Avyayam The Vedas say Like a boulder is a part of the mountain 
a drop of water is a part of the ocean a ray is a part of the sun similarly all the souls in creation are tiny fragmental parts of the supreme soul who is god ishwara ansha jeeva avinasi the ramayan states so as little fragments of god we have the qualities of god in us if the ocean contains h2o and nacl dissolved in it the drop from it also contains h2o and nacl dissolved in it similarly god is sat chit anand full of eternality knowledge and bliss and we his tiny fragmental parts are also sat chit anand as little parts of god we have infinite potential the little spark has the ability to create to decimate an entire city the great fire of london it is said that one cow jumped over something and the lamp turned over it resulted in half of london getting burned in the 17th century so the spark has the qualities of the fire and we have the qualities of god to a tiny extent but because we are his fragments he has a grand plan for us God has not created us to live down in the dumps. He has created us so that one day when we wake up to claim our divine inheritance we will achieve the supreme perfection that he has planned for us. Hence Swami Vivekananda said These great prophets were not unique they were men as you and i and they had attained to super consciousness and you and i can do the same the very fact that one man attained that state indicates that all men can do so and that ultimately is religion What is the purpose of religion? Not that we remain defective and sinners, but that we become perfect like our father in heaven is perfect as the Bible says. 